Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome back in lecture 02, example 01. Students, finally we reach to the design examples and in all coming lectures you will see how to design uh, a flexure member. So this is design example number 01. Lecture part lecture 02 example 01 so let's start you can see here in a slab system as the system plan i have drawn here layout is i have already drawn here longer beams have a singly singly supported effective span of 25 feet so that why this is these are my longer spans and this is uh, have 25 feet and shorter beams have three spans these are my shorter span beams along this one this one and this one these are my shorter span and it has a beam spans of 15 feet each slab thickness is given that is six inches right and floor finish consists of three inch brick ballast Two inch floor finish the longer beams support nine inch thick and seven feet high brick wall this is important the structure is to be used as an office building this is also important because on this type for this type we will choose the live load the material strengths are given selecting use bars design the interior longer beam so we have to design this beam or we have to design this beam having a rectangular section with width of the beam is already given that is 12 inches because we have 12 by 12 inch column and uh, under the following conditions we have two conditions two cases right here the first case minimum depth of 10 with maximum steel ratio right decide d on the basis of rho max so we, you will learn how to fix the D minimum on the basis of rho max, which is from ductility criteria. Even if it violates the SA minimum depth for deflection control, that is L by 20 or L by whatever the coefficient will be. So don't consider that criteria. Just find out the depth from rho max. Overall depth equal to 30 inches. So this is the design example i have already drawn the section the plan and we will cover this example in three parts part e1a e1b and e1c in part e1a which is the present case this is basically the present case right this is this is E01A part. Now here we will find out the slab load, right? The brick wall loading, approximate self weight of the beam, equivalent width of the slab, factor load acting on beam, bending movement, D minimum from the formula, rho minimum, and depth from deflection criteria. We will find these topics in this example in this uh, present lecture in next part which is e01b part we will find we will we will solve case one right in that case we will find the rho max a is area of steel mu value and then we finally do the detailing while in last part that is 01c in that case we have already d is given that is case 2 so d is already given that is 30 inches uh, that is h right this is h so overall depth is given that is 30 inches we will find out the effective depth and we will find out the area of steel by using the four or five, five methods of four, as we pre, as we discussed in previous part that is 12, part 12 so you will learn here the the required methods and we will uh, then this example will be finished.
so let me write down the data right here so what data we have given this is important we have length or span of the beam is given that is 25 feet we have slab thickness that is slab thickness let's say we denote this by uh, tc right slab thickness rts which is six inches already given uh, floor brick ballast we have brick ballast which is three inches thick floor finish which is uh, two inch thick we have material strength that is 3 ksi we have steel grade that is fy which is 60 ksi the width of the beam section is given that is 12 inches the wall thickness that is tw which is 9 inch the wall height that is h which is given which is seven feet so this is all about the data right now let's start the solution first of all we will find out the slab load i have already a separate lecture on this so let me find out the weight of the RC slab that will be the thickness of the slab divided by 12 to convert it into feet and divided it by the density of the concrete that is 150 so if you use your calculator you got 7.5 PSF pound per square feet similarly we have brick ballast So the thickness is 3 inches divided by 12 multiply by the density of brick ballast which is 110, 110 pound per cubic feet. So this is 27.5 PSF. Then we have PCC which is floor finish. So floor finish means PCC plus terrazzo. Different type of material may be used for floor finish but here we are assuming let's say we have terrazzo and uh, PCC that is 2 divided by 12 and the density of PCC and plus terrazzo that is 144 which is 24 PSF and uh, this is all about the dead loads we will add this so total load total dead load is uh, around about 126.5 PSF. This is all about total dead load. So let me show you these densities and the lyo load tables. You can see the plain concrete density 144 PSF, reinforced concrete density 150. You can see the all the loads uh, you can see the density of brick ballast which is which is which we may be taken from 100 to 110 the lie load table so we have an office building so for for office building we can choose the lie load from 50 to 85 pounds per square feet so here we will select or choose 50 PSF. So this is all about live loading. So let me write down here my live load will be 50 PSF. Right? This is all about live loading. Now uh, so total we will find out total factored load total factored load
which is denoted by WU. So total factor load, we will use this combination because we have only dead load and live load. So this one will be the governing combo. We can also use WU equals to 1.4 dead load and we will choose the maximum one. So this time this will give us a lower value than this one. So that one that will be the final combination 1.4 times dead load which is 126.5 plus 1.6 times the live load which is 50 psf and uh, we will convert this into cap so divide this by thousand so finally we have 0 0.232 ksf cap per square feet so this is my ultimate slab load per square feet remember this is only the slab load now we will find out the brick wall load so brick wall load which is brick is directly supported by the beam right brick let me draw the figure we have 25 feet span and the wall is directly supported by the by the beam so that why will be look like in the shape so the thickness is thickness tw is 9 inch and the height of the wall is 7 feet so per running feet load of the wall we have already discussed this so service dead load service dead load of the wall is the the brick the brick density is 120 psf uh, pcf pound per cubic feet right the thickness of wall divided by 12 times the height of the wall times 1 divided by 1000 to convert it into caps and we don't multiply 25 because we don't want to uh, to take the, the total load of the wall we just want to convert the load into cap per running feet so from this we will get 0 0.63 kip per running feet right now we will factor this load so factored wall load so factored wall load let me write down this wu wall so we will multiply it as this is a dead load right this is not live load so that why we multiply it with 0 0.63 and from this we got so if you use your calculator you will got 0 0.756 kip per running feet if you want to find the total total factored wall load so we will multiply this 0 0.756 with 25 so the span is 25 that why i got here 18 so from this we got the value 18.9 kip total load this is total load of wall but we don't need this load we need this load this is our requirement this is the load of the wall and let me find out the load of the beam right here we can write a Approximate 
approximate self at a beam right approximate self at of b now <coughs> service did load a beam the beam weight will be multiplied by the density of beam times weight divided by 12 times h divided by 12 right it will be divided by 1000 to convert it into caps so the density of the concrete in us customary units it is 150 we know this the width of the section is already given that is if it is not given so it can be assumed from l by 15 to l by 20 most of the time we assume this l by uh, B is most of the time B is L by 18 and depth that is H for most of the com common bean it is taken as L by 12 so that why here I am using L by 12 right here I am using L by 12 so that why uh, L is 25 feet so that by L by 25 feet and 1 divided by 1000. So if you use your calculator, you got 0 0.31 kip per running feet. This will be the self weight of the beam. And uh, let me convert it into factored load. So factored dead load of the beam so it will be kind of multiplied with 1.2 times 0 0.31 we got 0 0.38 kip per feet sometime we may assume this load as 0 0.55 kip per running feet to one kip per feet without doing this calculation we assume this load in this range so this is my beam self weight now the most important and the most uh, tricky part is the calculation of the equivalent width of the section so as you can see here this is a two-way slab system because if you find the ratio of longer to shorter span it is uh, 1.66 which is less than 2 so that why it is a, a two-way slab system now we need the equivalent width of the slab supported by beam 1 so you can see here clearly that this shorter beam will support the triangular loading similarly this will support the triangular loading while this beam you can see here which is the longer beam it will support the trapezoidal loading this is the load distribution mechanism we have recorded a lecture separate lecture over this i have uploaded so please watch this that lecture so here this is my trapezoidal area for this beam so we have a trapezoidal case a trapezoidal loading and we will find the equivalent width so let me search that So here you can see here this is my B3 beam. So B3 is the longer beam and having two trapezoidal trapezoidal areas. So we will search the B3 equivalent width. This is uh, B2 
this is beam 1 and here we have B3 so here we can see the equivalent width of B3 which is Lx1 minus R divided by 2 and uh, we have multiplied that factor and that factor will be this one so the equivalent width will be Lx1 minus R square divided by 3 right and R is nothing it is the ratio of shorter to longer I think so you can see here R is is the ratio of shorter to longer span so that why we will choose this value Lx1 minus R square divided by 3 we will use this R square divided by 3 Lx right and the R value will be Lx divided by if is let me do this calculation on a new page now we have next step is equivalent width of slab supported by by B1 we will find out the R which is Lx divided by Ly Lx is 15 feet and Ly is 25 feet so the ratio of these two will be 0 0.6 now the equivalent width equivalent width of the slab will be Lx into 1 minus R square divided by 3 so Lx 15 1 minus 0 0.6 square divided by 3 what we got here 14.5 sorry 14 point uh, you must remember this point I have for forgot this point we have to increase this load by 10 percent which which means we have to multiply this with a with, with 1.10y because if we have multi span beam system let me explain this point I don't explain this point in that part so let's say if we have So this is my first interior these are my first interior span or interior beams so for these we have to increase that equivalent width by 10% right so please remember this point that why I am multiplying this factor and from this I will got 14.52 feet this is the width and hence I have already mentioned this if you want to find out the load from the slab to beam so the factored the factored slab load acting on beam will be that equivalent width 
times the slab load per unit length. per unit area remember we have to only multiply the slab load that is the terrazzo finishing load slab load not the wall load and the beam load so the equivalent area is 14.52 and the slab load is 0 0.232 we have already calculated this so that why my final loading on the beam will be kip per feet 3.37 kip per feet which is the load transfer from slab to beam remember it doesn't include the wall the, the weight of the the loading of the wall and the loading of the beam right we have to include this so my final loading wu will be this loading which is coming from the slab to beam plus the wall loading which is 0 0.75 or 0 0.676 around this plus the weight of the beam which we have already calculated and this is my final load which is kip per feet this is my final loading which is acting over the beam so we have simply supported beam and the final loading is 4.51 kip per running feet so this is the simply supported case the bending movement diagram will be will be in the shape right and the maximum bending movement will be at the middle span and uh, it will be mu max wu l square divided by 8 so from this equation wu l square divided by 12 so if we plug the value 4.51 times 25 square divided by 8 we got 352.4 kip feet this is the final moment and um, we will find out the minimum depth of the beam that is d minimum so by using our derived equation the minimum depth mu divided by 0 0.205 fc prime into b so we know about mu that is 352.4 it will be converted into into found which is multiplied by 1000 and it will be converted into inches which is multiplied by 12 because this is kf feet so that way we convert this into pound inches because the lower dimension are the inches so that why we convert this into pound inches here fc prime 3000 psi and b is 12 inches we can use only 352.4 divide by we convert this into feet and we will take this in cap ksf so this is difficult so that why we convert the movement into pounds inch from this we got the minimum depth or d minimum this is important this is it comes out to be 24 inches this is important and make sure you have to remember this value that d minimum will be this one if we find out the this d from deflection criteria from deflection criteria so we as we have we have already discussed the table we will discuss this table 
in previous parts so here is my beam case and uh, my my steel grade is 420 MPa which is 60 KSI and uh, I have simply supported beam so that why I will choose this coefficient I will choose this coefficient L by 16 this is the way how we can use this table now so that why picking that coefficient from that table on the basis of f y equals to 60 ksi and for a case of simply supported beam the coefficient r h minimum will be l by 16 multiply by 12 to convert feet into inches so 25 times 12 divided by 16 we got here minimum depth of the beam will be 19 inches so this is all about deflection criteria this step is from deflection criteria so here we cover all the topics right and uh, let me check the topics so we covered slab load brick load approximate self fed equivalent fit factor loading on acting on the beam bending moment d minimum and the only thing is that is that is left is the row minimum so row minimum can be easily calculated by using the 3 fc prime divided by fy so 3 thousand divided by 60,000 are 200 divided by 60,000 From this I will guard 0 0.0027 while from this I will guard 0 0.003 yes 0 0.003 0 .0033. so the governing part is this one we will choose the maximum value and my row minimum is 0 0.0033 this ones of here in next part we will cover the rest of the cases see you in next lecture thank you for watching